I'm Kausal Tripathi, your instructor, and today we are going to talk about blurring or smoothening of images. Okay, so blurring concept is basically if you have seen in your phone the bokeh effect or, or you know this effect only, where you see you can blur out certain sections of the behind and you focus on some image, something that you want to put a focus on, and you blur out rest of the things. So today, oh, we are going to learn how our image processing, how uh, these image processing tools will help us automatically blur out certain sections of the image or the total image, and how they are gonna do blur it. There are lots of methods. We will work out all the methods. We understand where which kind of method is used, and this is all. Let's see it in a spider ID. All about all about these methods. Okay, so here we are. This is our program. Okay, there are lots of things that you have already studied, like CV to import, numpy, MP. This time I have read this apple.jpg file. I will show you what that file is later on. Then I have created this. You can see here I have created two uh, uh, arrays, matrix of five by five. You can see here, and I have named them color five by five and color fifteen x fifty. And these are two matches. Okay, let me rename it. Nine by nine matrix. Okay, this is a nine by nine matrix. As you can see, np dot once nine comma nine means there is a matrix of n by nine by nine size with all the values one. Okay, and I have divided by d one. That's different thing. Then I have you can see here I have used few methods. We will all we will talk about them later. And then I have shown all those images. I have just comment out certain which I will. Remove the comments later on, and then there's wait key and destroy all the vectors. So basically, if you see all these methods, filter to be blur, Gaussian blur, median blur, blur, bilateral filter. Sometimes this blur is also called averaging. So these are all you know methods of blurring an image or smoothing an image. So what happens is basically uh, this is a filter to be method. So, what happens is a uh, this filter 2D method works with a help of kernel. Now, kernel is like if you know, uh, image is a you know matrix. It is a form of a matrix. If you see here, um, my variable section over there. Oh, let me let I'm just running this program. Don't bother about it. Okay, I'm just fetching out the variables. Okay. Okay, so if you see here, this is our image one, and if I open this image, now you see this is a form of a matrix, okay? And if I uh, see it like this, so th this is our matrix of 512 by 512, okay? If I make it full screen. You can see this is our matrix, complete matrix of 512 by 512, okay? You can see here. It says 511 and starts from zero, so there are 512 rows, 512 columns. So now, what our kernel does? Uh, let me show you my kernel also. What kernel is really? This is a suppose this is a kernel of five by five. If I open this kernel, so you see here it has got five rows and five columns. What it does? It puts on to each of our, you know, this uh, matrix. Like right now, it will put over this part, and it will process it the way we are asking it to process. Like we are using a filter 2D method. That means it is gonna. What it does is, uh, let me just then. So what will happen is like this is a 0 comma 0 point, so it is going to multiply with this 0 comma 0 point, and whatever the value will go, it will put that value into that pixel. Same thing will happen with one 0 comma 1, it will multiply it with this 0 point 0 for multi will multiply with 82, and whatever value will come will be put over there. So this is how this filter 2D uh, blurring happens, and this is how our kernel works. So what happens when it will cover this 5 by 5 section, it will move down. 
then again down uh, down it will keep on doing up to when it will reach up to the 512th row then 511th row sorry and then again it will move from this punch part to like start from 1 to end to 5 then starts from 2 and end at 6 and it keeps on putting its that kernel which we call a special matrix which you are place, placing over the uh, image matrix for evaluating so what it will do it will keep on putting itself onto that original matrix and keep on multiplying the values and whatever the value will come it will put it into this pixel section so this is a kernel this is our original matrix i think got a pretty good idea what these are so this filter 2d works in this way it's like whatever the kernel will provide it that values of the kernel will keep on multiplying inside of the whatever the values present inside the matrix now that kernel uh, now we create this kernel like this by creating a matrix of 5 by 5 or 9 by 9 or 7 by 7 or 6 by 6 whatever your choice and then we divide it by the multiplication of 5 into 5 or 9 into 9 or whatever the values are present over there we divide that matrix with a multiplication of the length to breadth okay so we have created i have created this kernel i have created two kernels here kernel 5 by 5 and kernel 9 by 9 two size kernel you can create any size kernel 11 by 11 15 by 50 or 100 by 100 if you want but remember one thing the high, bigger your kernel is the more blurry your image will become okay i will show you like now okay uh, don't bother about this section of the code okay it will not work because i am not showing anything related with it I am just uh, running these two kernels. One is I 50, 5 by 5 and another is my uh, 9 by 9 kernel. Okay. I am going to run this much of the code and let's see. This is my original image of an apple. As you can see here. Now I am going to reveal filter 2D. Okay. This is my somewhat blurred image. But you see, it is uh, uh, maintaining the borders, but uh, blurring out this section, this section also. And then there is my filter 2D, uh, more blurred image, you know, of kernel 9 by 9. Now you see, this image looks a lot blurry. This was a somewhat good image. Okay, this is our original. Sorry, this is very candid. This is our original image, first one. Our original image. Okay, it is. It was looking some um, nice image, original. Then filter 2D image. What filter 2D does? It uh, manage the border somewhat, not completely, and uh, kind of blurring the other things inside of the image. And if you see here, it's uh, it, this section, this uh, white section, somewhat yellowish section. It looks you know a lot more clear and accurate. But here, if you see, it is all a little bit of blurred out okay and it is and it also is moving the uh, useless noise from the image that is present in there it is blurring them out basically blurring is mostly used for removing the extra things or the noise like you take an image you use it in a bokeh mode so what it does you whatever the background there is you just blur out the background because that's all noise for you okay you want to focus on certain person whose photo you are taking or certain thing that photo you are taking and you are blurring out other things because those are all for, for you those are all noise so that's the meaning of a noise in images and then there's this third image we have and it is you see a lot blurred out here there's nothing means if you see this yellow section it is like almost blurred out it feels like like you need a good spectacles to look at this image okay and this outer section also you see it is blurring out these parts it's but what happening is we are not getting a good focus on some anything okay it is blurring out the apple also outer sections also everything is getting blurred out no focus is there so this is filter 2d and that's how it works okay so now i will comment out this filter 2d cvt show otherwise there will be lots of images in the you know, program in our screen now next comes is cv2 dot blur this cv2 dot blur now cv2 dot blur it does it also creates a kernel same time 
but in the earlier we have to define our kernels we have to create our own matrix of kernels in this we don't have to create our matrix of kernels it will automatically create your matrix of kernel and what it does is what are the kernel you have created like you have created a 5 by 5 kernel so it will be also uh, values of 1 and 1 1 1 1 1 values and which will be divided by 1 by 25 as it is 5 into 5 25 and uh, what it does it will it will also be put in the, the matrix you know and 5 by 5 blocks and uh, what it will do is over there it will take the average of all the pixels values that are coming inside of that block and take out this average and will put that average into the whatever the value will come out of that average it will put it on the center pixel of that area that's why in this um, cv2 dot blur we take odd size of matrix like 5 by 5 or 7 by 7 or 9 by 9 or 11 by 11 and that's how this blurring effect works and if i run this code okay let me explain you other than we will run it uh, you know all together these then the next one is comes is a Gaussian blur. Now Gaussian blur is um, a blur that use, you know, this Gaussian filter, filter, what it does, Gaussian blurring. What it does, it basically, you know, it removes the Gaussian noise, whatever the Gaussian noise that you have inside of an image. Gaussian noise are like, uh, you know, when you take some kind of an image, you take a photo and you find some kind of an illumination problem, like light problem or temperature problem all these kinds of very temperature variations are so uh, it removes all those kinds of noise from that image now uh, Gaussian uh, this if you see here we have used this image one argument and then we have used this five five comma five argument uh, this is our kernel size that we are providing it and we are seeing this we are using the zero over here now the zero is all and this we you see here we have created this kind of a matrix over here which is uh, somewhat incomplete right now this matrix is how it is formed there's not just only one matrix that there is that is used in the gloss and blur blurring then lots of matrix can be used are and are created so how you uh, help uh, help out the program to understand which matrix is to be used we provide these values over here like right now i've given it zero zero and let me show you what values are provided over here by here. Okay, so you see here it says source size, then kernel size, and then it says sigma x and sigma y over here. Now what these are? Sigma x and sigma y are basically uh, the standard deviations of x direction and y direction. If you have studied in you know in 12th, 11th, or in engineering, you would have in your graduation, you know what a standard deviation is. So it asks to provide these values and accordingly, according to those values, it is going to create a matrix. So now, uh, basically, uh, I have not provided any, at that time, any uh, standard deviations. I have given it 0. When we give it 0, it automatically creates uh, standard, uh, what you say, this kernel, default kernel it creates. So I, I just created a default kernel. I don't want to keep providing any value. So I give it zero. So it will accept sigma x and sigma y zero. If you provided any single value like three, so what it does, it will take three as sigma x and three as sigma y. It will take three as both of the values. So I'm providing it zero. Nothing to worry about. Okay, you can, you should work out with all these uh, numbers and find out which is working good in what kind of an image. Okay, these are not just simple, you know, standards things uh, like image processing. Every uh, blurring concept, every argument inside of this blurring concept works according to the that image. You don't know which concept is going to work on which image. Okay, every image has its own kind of a blurring. You know, you don't know what, uh, you know, every image requires like uh, in some image you need to remove, blur out something. In some image you need to blur out some other things. So you don't know which method or which argument basically you are going to be using. I'm just telling you how you can use it so that you can, whenever the things comes, you can change your arguments and keep working on it. So this was about Gaussian blurring. Now this is the one gone in the Gaussian blurring that I will tell you later when I will be explain, explaining this bilateral filter. Okay, so I will leave it up to that part. Then we come to the this uh, median blur, this part. 
you know median blur is a uh, you know it is just like a averaging blur but only the difference is it uh, does not take the average it takes a medium of all the pixels that comes under that kernel of oh, and we have given it 5 and it takes it as like 5 by 5 matrix it is a uh, square it takes a square kernel of same size so you don't need to bother about that it is gonna uh, take it as 5 by 5 kernel and we have given it source image and whatever what does it takes a kernel and uh, finds out all the me all the values that are present inside of that pixel it takes a median of all that values and put it at the center of that uh, kernel so that's how uh, this median blurring works okay then there is this bilateral filter now this bilateral filter is like a, a very effective filter i mean i prefer this filter a lot okay it really works out it gives you uh, edges perfectly it, like I will not say perfectly, but yeah, it provides us edges uh, like good, and uh, that's the con with the Gaussian filter over here. Uh, Gauss, what Gaussian filter does is Gaussian blur. It uh, you know it considers the pixels of outside the kernel also. When you uh, create put a kernel over that some part of a matrix, it also considers the pixels outside of that kernel, and uh, then it evaluates itself. But in bilateral filter, it also somewhat does the same thing. But it, uh, you know, it keeps on checking whether that filter, that pixel is of edge fit, edge pixel or not. If it's of an edge pixel, it tries to maintain its um, clarity. I would say. Okay, so when you will see this bilateral filter image, you would find that edges are perfectly shown over there. They are not blurred out like in the other images. Okay. Now we see the arguments of this image. So you see, uh, this bilateral filter, sorry. So you see, I have given it an image one argument. Then I have given it a value of nine, and then there is this two values, seventy five and seventy five. Okay. <coughs> sorry. So to understand this concept, uh, let's create a. And you see, it says source image SRC, and then it says D, and D is our diameter. Or you can say kernel size, same thing, almost doesn't create much effect then there is a sigma color and sigma space okay these things are new that i'm gonna explain you right now so i'm gonna put image one over here and then i'm gonna give it a diameter of you can say kernel size like five or earlier i've given it nine then uh sigma color now sigma color basically says ki, uh, for how much farther difference between the two pixel colors you're gonna work with okay so I have given it 75. That means the, the different uh, the difference between the two color pixels. That if their difference is around 75, then they will be get mixed. It will work with those pixels and it will mix them up. And same thing is uh, I have given sigma space also 75. That means for how much farther pixels means how much like one pixel is at some coordinate and the pixel is at some other coordinate. So there's a distance between them. So how much farther pixel we are gonna be picking for mixing them up to remove the noise of that image. So that also I have given 75. And uh, this is so basically bilateral filter is like a you know a somewhat kind of a perfect, uh, not perfect, a very good filter because it uh, detects the edges, it preserves those edges, and it removes the no, it removes noise very clearly preserving while preserving the edges so it's like you know you got everything in one so if i just remove these comment sections like blur then gaussian bilateral and medium okay this is all same let me move this much also okay so now if i run this image yeah i got a lot of images now this is the you know here this top image this is the original image you know see it looks completely clear then the next one this blur now if you see this blur and the original see it is like it is, what blur does it averages out the pixels okay you see it is a you know somewhat got blurred not it is not very much blurred we have took a very small kernel size also 5 by 5 but yeah it looks so like oh you know out, if you see these outer sections over here this yellow part somewhat and here it is like it looks a lot blurred 
we are getting a good focus on this apple over here but okay then we close it and uh, we go for this Gaussian law and if I put it over here you see right now we are having a good edges around here but you see it is blurring out the edges it is blurring out everything okay you see inside also so that's the only con inside of a Gaussian blur otherwise Gaussian blur is a very good blurring effect it creates a very good blurring effect but that's the con that it does it couldn't detect the edges and it does not preserve them sometimes it blurs them out also like if you see this bilateral over here now if you see it is preserving the edges you can see the edges can be seen clearly other than this uh, Gaussian even it is preserving them better than the original if you see this original the edges are not that clear but if you see this bilateral it has preserved the edges and you see in these three images and even if I put this fourth image over here this median blurring you see we are getting a good focus on the apple of bilateral than any other uh, you know blurring effect we are getting good focus on that apple and rest of everything is blurred out it preserved the edges which is making it look more emphasized on now in median blur I told you it blurs out the it creates a median of the pixels and you see it also did a good blurring but there is no focus on anything it's like a very light blurring you know if you see here it is in this area is like not clear what is there but if you see in this it is like somewhat blurred out it's like you know filter to uh, that sorry filter to you thing blurring uh, that averaging blur it is like that somewhat similar to that okay so this is in the blurring as you see this bilateral bilateral is like a really good blurring effect to try to work with a bilateral uh, more and more because you'll find it you you are getting good with it because it, it really works um, like the, most of the situations bilateral effect works very perfect very not perfectly very good never better right? okay so this is the blurring effects these are all the effects that you can create with the blur, uh, these methods inside of the blur okay try to work with these to keep on changing the values work with this bilateral filter and caution blur you will get a better results with it okay so this is all about blurring keep practicing it see you in the next video